So as AI comes in, how's it gonna change the uh, existence of colleges and universities? I think if we're totally honest, so there's no question right now, we're just at the beginning tip of AI changing the way we work. In higher education, outside of colleges and universities, I think we're at this moment where we're starting to see new forms of learning pop up. A lot of these are gonna be work-based experiences. I'm a lecturer at the Harvard Graduate School of Education and the co-founder of the Clayton Christensen Institute. Fifty percent of colleges will close or merge or go bankrupt over the next decade. As we dug into it a little bit more, really it's more like 25% of colleges and universities that are running business models that just don't work and they're gonna need to close or merge and I think as we even dug into it more deeply, we said, really, this is a two-decade change. It's driven by demographic declines in the wake of the Great Recession. It's driven by a model that keeps adding cost, but can't possibly charge people more. And it's driven by a model where they're starting to become substitutes in how we get our college educations and upskilling in the world of work. And what we're now seeing is that over the last 10 years alone, 15% of colleges in the United States have closed or merged. Over the past year, almost one college every single week has closed. In public colleges and universities, we've seen whole systems consolidate in dramatic fashion in the states of Pennsylvania, Georgia, Connecticut, Wisconsin, and more. And so we've really seen that we have overbuilt supply for dwindling demand over the past many years, and it's coming to roost right now. And the really interesting thing, I think, on top of that is that right now we're at peak demographics of the numbers of students graduating from American high schools. It's about to decline precipitously because starting in 2008, people had fewer babies. And so we have too many seats in colleges for 18-year-olds with not nearly enough 18-year-olds coming out at the same time that a lot of people are skeptical about the value of an ever more expensive college or university experience and not sure, do I really get a return on the other side that makes it worth it? Under that weight, the 15% that have already closed, I think it's easy to imagine that we get to 25, 40% over the next five, six years. Here's the thing, right? Which is if you're at a place like Harvard or Yale or Stanford or the state flagship schools or you know, the Notre Dames of the world, you're fine. There's so much demand for limited seats at those universities. They've been able to charge high prices. They make a lot of money, frankly, from the research grants that come in. They're really research first institutions in many cases. They're incredibly important to the economies that surround them. Those sorts of institutions are gonna be fine. It's really this soft middle tier where these institutions are very expensive. The expenditures underlying them continue to go up. They don't have strong brand names and they have trouble attracting students beyond 50, 75 miles of where they live. So a stat that might surprise you is a decade ago, 40% of colleges and universities enrolled fewer than 1,000 students in this country. And so that's where, when we see this hollowing out, there are 4,000 some odd colleges and universities in this country. That's where the hollowing out is really happening. It's not happening at the elite ends uh, of, of our uh, American university system. So as AI comes in, how is it going to change the uh, existence of colleges and universities? I think if we're totally honest, we have no real clue yet. AI is still searching for product market fit in higher education, as Cal Newport, the noted computer scientist at Georgetown, said recently. But I think we can see a few things are starting to change. A lot of institutions are going to be able to use AI in what we would call sustaining innovations to improve the way they currently serve students. So student success measures to take in data and respond much quicker to their needs to frankly create a more frictionless environment for students who are coming into college and university. The other piece where AI is making an immediate impact is in research. It's helping a lot of faculty members do research quicker, 
come up with different hypotheses, test them in novel ways, crank out new papers and things of that nature much faster, maybe much more readable. In terms of teaching and learning, I think the jury is still out. And my own hypothesis is that we're probably going to see a wave of new colleges and universities or, or new post-secondary institutions, apprenticeship programs, boot camps, things like that, that are powered by AI that create maybe more personalized teaching and learning experiences than we could have otherwise imagined. And it'll be really interesting to see what the impact on the market is of those innovations. So there's no question right now, we're just at the beginning tip of AI changing the way we work. My sense is over the next couple of years, the changes will be modest, but over the next 10 years, 15 years, they're gonna be pretty dramatic. Already, it's said that people in technical fields, their skills depreciate basically every four years. So you need to be constantly upskilling and reskilling. I think AI is just going to accelerate a lot of those trends. And the impact of that on colleges and universities, I think at least two seismic impacts. Number one, the need to be upskilling much more frequently throughout our lives is going to become paramount. And so having short burst, quick programs that we can just duck in, get more skills, duck back out of into the workforce, much more seamless experience of work and learning, I think are gonna be really important, but also huge opportunities for colleges and universities looking to serve more students because adults, all of us in the world of work, we're, we're gonna just need to be learning much more throughout our lives. Like lifelong learning won't just be a buzz phrase, it's gonna be a way of how we work and, and exist in society. And colleges and universities have a big role to play there. I think the second thing that it's gonna change is make experiential learning much more important to the learning experience. If AI is changing how we work really rapidly, keeping up with those changes, codifying them in say a textbook or an online course, it's gonna be really hard. The moment you do it, it's gonna be out of date six months, a year later. But the more we can create really experiential opportunities for students to learn through cases, through simulations, on the job, things of that nature, I think we can be much more relevant keep up with the pace of change in meaningful ways and not sort of fall back on the old pedagogical models that we've had. In higher education outside of colleges and universities, I think we're at this moment where we're starting to see new forms of learning pop up. A lot of these are gonna be work-based experiences. So apprenticeships are becoming a much bigger point of emphasis and people and employers thinking, how can we leverage these to educate the future workforce without a degree perhaps, but make sure we get really good individuals coming into these jobs to power our future success. A lot of people are looking at work-based degrees. We have an alumni, uh, alum of the school, Mallory Dwinnell, who is building work-based degree program. So you get the best of the degree, but you get really practical experience on the ground and far more affordable because it doesn't cost a lot of money to educate people and they can be earning money in a job while they are learning as a core part of the experience. So I think we're going to see a lot of these alternatives to traditional college make much bigger headway in the years ahead. What we really have right now in the economy, I think, is a signaling problem, that traditional degrees have never been a perfect proxy for this person's ready for this particular job, but they're breaking down faster. And what's more, when we need technically skilled people in, in jobs, and, and frankly, even more technically skilled, because a lot of entry-level roles are, are disappearing right now, people are going to need more technical skills, but they don't necessarily have degrees to get those. And so these alternatives to the traditional college experience that are much more ensconced in work itself, embedded with the skills and experiences people need to really succeed, I think is going to be the future. And AI is going to sort of accelerate that in two ways. One, because the changing nature of work is going to accelerate, having people on the ground with you, actually working on the problems, getting real experiences, understanding what the job entails, and building the appropriate skills, I think that's gonna be more important, not less in the future. 
And I think we're going to be able to use AI to more rapidly spin up educational programs alongside those work-based experiences to help make sure people don't have gaps in their learning or have the right technical foundation to be able to be great at those jobs.